Please join me in welcoming the fifth finalist team onto the stage from IBM. Hello, my name is Tom Gargiulo, and I am a Vice President of IBM Services. On behalf of IBM, I would like to thank the judges for selecting IBM as a finalist for the prestigious Edelman Award. We're delighted to be here. I will now give you an overview of IBM Services, as well as our business and the business problem we faced. IBM Services designs, builds, and runs the foundational systems and services that are the backbone of the world's digital economy. IBM's experts in business and technology and industry use advanced technology to help clients reduce cost and risk, achieve compliance, accelerate speed to market, create new revenue streams, establish a security-rich, reliable infrastructure that's ready for AI, analytics, hybrid cloud. Our clients represent the cornerstones of the industries, including airlines, mobile operators, manufacturers, banks, retailers, and insurance companies. In part of our business, IBM Services, of which global technology services is $34 billion, we compete in a tender offer process to win complex service contracts worth a few million to multi-billion dollars each. The process starts with the client drafting a request for proposals, RFPs, usually with the help of a third-party advisor. In response to the client's RFP, IBM services and other service providers prepare and submit solution proposals to the client in a similar manner so the advisor can compare the proposals on a level playing field against many criteria including price, risk, culture, technology, and quality perspectives. There's usually up to 10 com competitors for each of the deals, where a client would typically engage early down select to an average of three and continue the negotiation process that lasts anywhere from three months to a year. Key competitors, historical competitors, are like companies like HP, other competitors like Indian service providers, TCS and HCL, and local competitors who have strength in their own markets. Each deal is very complex, containing services like cloud computing, security, mobility, Unix, network services, as well as service delivery management and governance, with an average of over 10,000 components in a typical opportunity. At the conclusion of the negotiation process, the client would choose one of the proposals or bids, either IBM's proposal or a competitor. A typical contract duration for such cases are three to five years of service delivery. So what exactly was the business problem? Let me illustrate those by going over different pain points we had. First. Clients' RFPs can be a lot of material to review, hundreds if not thousands of pages. It could take days just to read through the RFP to really understand the client's strategy and to break it down to something we can respond to, which is the first part of our business problem, RFP analysis, dealing with the volume of data in a timely manner. Once the client requirements are understood, the real work begins designing a competitive solution. This involves a highly skilled team from multiple disciplines working closely together to design a solution that meets the client requirements. In addition, we must estimate the appropriate cost for the solution. Traditionally, this work is very manual and could result in overlaps, gaps, or admissions, leading to our second problem, costing. Once the solution is developed, and the correct cost identified, it must be priced for response to the client. The price must be competitive in the marketplace as well as meet our own commercial requirements. The aim is to create an equitable balance between market price, 
which we propose to the client and IBM's own profit targets. This defines the third pain point, the need for fast, accurate, and optimized pricing. For the price to be market competitive, the team would spend time debating the winning price point. Typically, this would be based on previous experience of or so-called rules of thumbs of our more senior people. Obviously, this would not work well in all cases. Introducing the fourth pain point, the need to build a market price benchmark by mining market data and tailoring it to the current bid. Finally, as multiple deals are pursued at the same time, our leadership needs to know which deals are most likely to be won and which ones are not progressing well so that the right funds and resources can be put on the right deals. Typically, this would be based on gut feel and instinct, not based on data or analytics, which is the fifth business problem, the need for a consistent approach and analytics for wins prediction. Obviously, the whole process was manual, resource intensive, time consuming, and fragmented. As one can imagine, the budget, just to figure out the bid and response to a client's RFP, could be very large, sometimes into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. The downside for not doing this thoroughly would be to be eliminated from the bid process, not only losing IBM money in the terms of the investment we made for the engagement, but also a loss of large potential revenue opportunity. This further motivates the need for developing tools to solve our pain points and implementing them in IBM services business process. This figure illustrates the business process that existed before the developed operations, research and analytics tools that Jeff will talk about next. With the pain points solved by these tools in, circled in red. Thanks, Tom. Hi, my name is Jeff Welser, and I'm the director of IBM's Almaden Research Lab. I'll talk to you first about what IBM Research is, and then give an overview of the OR and analytics tools we developed in partnership with IBM Services to solve the business problems just described by Tom. IBM Research is the innovation engine of the IBM Corporation. It is the largest industrial research organization in the world, with more than 3,000 researchers in 12 labs located across six continents. We play the long game, investing now in tomorrow's breakthroughs. We are specifically dedicated to applying AI, analytics, and science to industry challenges. As you can see in this slide, scientists from IBM Research have also been recognized at the highest levels, including the Nobel Prize, the US National Medal of Science, and the Turing Award. To solve the aforementioned pain points, IBM Research partnered with IBM Services to develop, build, implement, and importantly, deploy an OR and analytics ecosystem of tools aimed at transforming subjective, time-consuming business judgments into informed decisions based on data-driven insights. Our innovative tools tackle each of the five pain points, RFP analytics, costing, pricing, market benchmarking, and win prediction. This funnel figure shows the different stages of a typical deal negotiation which starts with the opportunity identification for which we develop the RFP analytics tool, then the deal validation and qualification for which we developed the costing and pricing analytics, and the deal pursuit and contracting where we develop the win prediction tool. And this is another view of these tools along with the corresponding type of the underlying analytics. As one can see, all three types of analytics, descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive are present in most of the tools. We use a lot of techniques and methods such as text mining, natural language processing, integer programming, and black box, black box optimization, among others. More importantly, we invented multiple novel variations of these techniques. And now I'm happy to share with you a video featuring Dario Gill, the director of IBM Research, endorsing our team and the innovation work behind this. At IBM Research, we innovate and imagine the future. Almost every game-changing advance that defines the information technology industry has its roots in an IBM Research Laboratory. We're proud of this legacy, and we continue to carry it forward. The tools that our researchers created and applied to this business challenge 
which contributed to being selected as a finalist for the prestigious Edelman Award are highly innovative, as evidenced by the filing with the United States Patent and Trademark Office of over a dozen patent applications, as well as the publication of 19 academic papers and articles in top venues. These tools also have impact. The IBM services and research teams work very closely together to ensure that. Not only have we derived significant benefit from these tools in our internal IBM services operating process, we also anticipate that these capabilities have the potential of being applied to other contexts, in the construction industry, to medical service contracts, and financial service outsourcing contracts. I'm very proud of our teams of their commitment to work together, and of their impact. I thank the Edelman Committee for choosing them as finalists. Unfortunately, time does not permit us to describe the details of all the 11 techniques embedded in the five different tools we created. However, Ali will now briefly touch on a few of the more complex techniques and describe the novel OR and analytics behind the tools. Thanks, Jeff. My name is Ali Megahed, and I am a research group lead at IBM Research, where I led the technical innovations and development of the different tools we did with and for IBM services. I'll start with a brief description of RFP analytics. The objective of this tool is twofold. First, we aim to cognitively, automatically process the RFP drafted by the client using customized text mining and natural language processing, or NLP, techniques to extract client requirements. <clears throat> Second, we map the client requirements to IBM's offerings. The first task is not trivial, <clears throat> as RFP documents are very different from one RFP to another, and thus mining some documents is not sufficient for building an efficient classification model for finding and classifying the requirements. What adds to the technical complexity is the fact that one RFP can be one document that could be in PDF format, doc format, DOCX, PowerPoint, um, or any other format, and it also could be multiple documents. A document could be up to over hundreds of pages. Also, RFP documents do not have one single structure for the different sections included in the document. For example, one RFP document might start with some background on the client, followed by the client's requirements, while another might start with a background on the bidding process followed by the existing client's IT capabilities. Therefore, there needs to be some identification of what, of what each section of the document is about and whether it relates to the requirements or not, which is also not trivial and needs some customized text mining and natural language processing, which is what we developed here. Where we convert the documents to a consistent format, then we use semantic structure identification to identify the sections. And then we developed custom text mining techniques where keywords extracted from a panel of experts and prior RFPs were used along with other extracted features to classify whether each section could include requirements, could not include requirements, or it's hard to tell. And then for the first and the last classes that I just mentioned, um, for the first and the last classes that I just mentioned, we classify each sentence, sentence as to whether it is a requirement or not, after extracting multiple entities and features from it. Then comes the last step, which is mapping the extracted requirements to IBM's offerings, which we discuss next. Mapping the extracted requirements to IBM's offerings or capabilities can be modeled using mixed engine programming, as shown in the top right, because we need to choose the minimum set of offerings to fulfill all requirements, since each requirement can be fulfilled by multiple offerings, and also the offerings share multiple attributes, as one can see in the chart on the top left. However, the cost structure of the offerings does not have a closed form. The cost structure is indeed a black box that we can query, but each query takes more than 15 seconds on average to get executed. Solving this exactly would be too inefficient because the whole method, as well as all the analytics described in this presentation, needed to be built in interactive web applications that users can interact with and run several times for what-if analyses. To address this challenge, we developed a novel technique where, first, a lot of queries are done offline, aiming at approximating the cost functions of the different offerings 
by piecewise linear concave functions with as many pieces as possible. We chose piecewise linear concave because we know that for economies of scale, almost all offering costs follow some non-increasing per unit cost function. And then, when we solve our model online, we switch between querying the approximate function where solving a piecewise linear integer program is easy via optimization solvers for our problem size, and querying the actual black box function. Now we transition to our costing and pricing techniques. Looking at the standard revenue management equation in this slide, where P represents the price and is a variable that we try to optimize, C corresponds to the cost, and PR of P is the price sensitivity curves, that is the probability of winning a deal at a certain price P, one can see that we can compute the optimal price if we can estimate the cost as well as the sensitivity curves of the price. To estimate the cost, we do a detailed data mining algorithm where we first choose the closest peer deals to the one we are working on through some customized filtering method. Then we perform data mining for these deals after we estimate the missing data using recommender systems. The missing data of these peer deals are due to the fact that our deal that we are trying to cost and price might have a very similar deal in the historical data except for one service that was not included in the deal. So we try to estimate the cost of that service had it been included in that peer deal. We do costing for the different types of services separately, then we aggregate the costs. For the price sensitivity curves, we built a machine learning classification model that uses the structural data of the deal, such as the client's geography, the relationship with the client, client's industry, client type, along with other attributes that we found to be statistically significant. Now that we estimated the cost and have a function that returns the probability of winning at any given price, we can optimize for that price. Note that the price sensitivity function is a machine learning classifier that does not have a closed form. So we used black box optimization techniques to optimize for the price. And now we move on to our win prediction models. For the win prediction model, we actually combine a structured data prediction model with an unstructured data one, both shown in orange. The scores of the two models are combined via another machine learning classifier, shown in green. And the final score is used to rank the deals in the pipeline and present that ranking to the business managers to take decisions on how to allocate resources and execute the different deals. It's worth mentioning that our average win prediction accuracy increased by using both models together. The structured data machine learning classification model uses static attributes like the client's industry, type, relationship with the client, and multiple other attributes we found statistically significant to predict winnability, along with dynamic attributes, like whether we agreed on the price with the clients or not, whether we agreed on the delivery time span with the client or not, and so on. The unstructured data model is much more detailed and has multiple novel parts to it, which I briefly discuss next. The unstructured data model analyzes the free form text seller comments written after each meeting with the client. That unstructured data model is extremely novel. We had to build each custom model. We had to build such custom model because the standard text mining techniques had two shortcomings for our case here. First, traditional models do not incorporate domain language to more effectively understand the, com the comments. Second, putting all comments into one unit results in ignoring the temporal nature of these comments, leading to inaccurate results. We treated both issues in the customized method we developed where we first identify the sentiment of the deal, analyzing its comments, where important entities such as the signature, agreement, price are extracted, and negative or positive statements about these entities representing important aspects about the progress of the deal are identified. Examples of these negative or positive statements are move forward, delays expected, green light, and so on. Therefore, this part of the analysis identifies sentiments that correlate with things like a green light on the price, agreement moving forward, and delays expected for the signature. The sentiment analysis is done through extracting entities, keywords, and also adding synonymous and domain-specific acronyms captured from a panel of seller experts. Then, we use the so-called pattern-based expansion to expand these concepts, then we calculate the sentence level sentiment using traditional techniques, but we also add all the aforementioned identified entities. 
Next, we compute the comment level sentiment by aggregating that of the sentence level. And finally, we calculate the deal level sentiment by aggregating that of the comment level, where we give the, a higher weight for newer comments. The rationale behind that is that newer meeting minutes are more updated and thus reveal more accurate information about the latest status of the deal. Note that although the above steps are meant to compute the sentiment, mainly to use it as an important feature for the wind prediction model based on the unstructured data, the, that sentiment itself is useful information for sales managers to track the progress of the deal. This is why we provide that sentiment in the wind prediction tool implemented for the business. We then include it as a feature in the standard classification, along with two more features, the enneagrams of important entities and a novel set of features that we called concepts. The rationale behind that last, latest feature is to overcome a challenge related to sparsity of the keywords. So now that we talked about the underlying analytics and OR of the tools we developed for the business, I give it back to Tom to walk you through the team we formed for implementation and deployment of the tools. So the implementation team consisted of three parties, the business team, the research team, and the development team. The primary role of the business team is to communicate the business pain points that needs to be addressed and prioritize the development requirements. The role of the research team is to develop the prototype, the novel analytical algorithms and solutions, and to oversee the technical direction of each tool. The development team is responsible for design and implementation of the production level application code. And they're also responsible for setting up the infrastructure such, such as the hosting environment, network configurations, etc. There's also been a testing team as part of the development team to perform integration tests beyond the unit tests done by the individual developers and business experts. It's been vital for all the project to have them interact closely, that they can have overlapping ownership. For example, shared understanding of the business problem with sufficient domain knowledge by the research team significantly increased the chance of success for the project. Conversely, understanding the technical solution by the business team to the extent that they can have good confidence and advocate for other business users helps both with the development and deployment. It took multiple years of collaboration to build such interactions in a trusted partnership. There's been challenges in the whole process and Mark will walk us through some of these challenges now and over how we overcame them and present some implementation details for each of the tools. Thanks, Tom. Hello, my name is Mark Smith and I'm the business lead at IBM Services for the development and the deployment of the tools covered by our submission. The development of global tools is relatively easy. People will participate, make the right noises, but when all is said and done, it's very far easy to find reasons why not to deploy. And getting it deployed is really what matters. For example, people are very precious about their own local processes. Others feel threatened because they are the acknowledged expert in their geography and may not actively promote the project. Some believe that their geography is special and resist standardized approaches as being a compromise. We came up against elements of all of these and had to, to adopt many different strategies to overcome them during both the development and the deployment. For example, solutioners are highly skilled technical people who are very, traditionally very autonomous and immediately distrust any sort of black box that just provides an answer without them having a high confidence factor in how that answer was derived. To gain their trust, we created a comprehensive series of self-help videos that explained our solution down to the level of the algorithms used to help them understand what was happening under the covers. There were also more corporate types of challenges. For example, security. Having all of the IBM cost data for engagements globally in a single data database accessible by many people globally is commercially high risk. Access to this type of data was tr traditionally restricted to a small number of us uh, expert users who would be assigned to assist teams and provide the analysis. We wanted a system where the users could do their own analysis. 
So to overcome this, a role-based a role security system was established with the emphasis on trust of the individual, bounded with strong audit capabilities of who did what and when. Then there were some non-functional challenges, like the community opposition to a centralised web-based application. This historically, solutioners needed to be able to perform their role without network connectivity. We took a calculated risk to proceed with the web-based design, enabling us to be more agile and develop deeper functionality with the promise that we would develop that to a locally-based solution should the need be proven in time. The need for a locally-based solution never resurfaced. When it came to the deployment, we used other strategies, like identifying user advocates in each geography, as the recommendation of these users are much better received than those coming from a centralised global team, even though I used to be a practitioner. And lastly, only after the tools started to be established, we embedded and mandated them within our bid sign-off and approvals processes that form part of the IBM corporate business controls. So let's discuss the progress made on implementation and the deployment of these tools. Since the overall process involves many challenges, too many challenges to resolve with a single tool, we built a suite of tools into an ecosystem. The deployment of the first of these tools was in 2014 and the latest in 2018. You can see this in the slide. The development and deployment timeline for each of the tools in the ecosystem. Each of these tools has been developed following an agile methodology that enabled new proactive functionalities to be implemented on a monthly basis, taking into account the latest user requests for new features and feedback on their experiences. There has been wide adoption of these tools. For example, the costing and pricing tool, internally called SCAN for Solution Competitive Analysis, now has over 1,000 registered users. The user base covers many roles in IBM with varied levels of authority and access. It has been used for analysis in 61 countries and at any one time has data on over 100 active engagements. It has been identified internally as one of IBM's most valuable intellectual assets. Jeff will now talk about the overall ecosystem of those tools that we have deployed for the business. So this is the older process we used to have before the tools were deployed. RFPs used to be manually interpreted. Now the RFP analytics tool cognitively analyzes the RFPs, extracting requirements and mapping them to offerings. There was no market or competitiveness view. Now we have a marketing benchmarking tool that creates market price targets. Costing was done manually via spreadsheets. Now there's an automatic and more accurate cost estimation. And pricing was done manually based on experience. Now that pricing is optimized. Win prediction was basically non-existent or based on gut feelings. Now there's a win prediction model that continuously monitors the deal's status and health, providing deal executives with a dashboard for each deal, monitoring its progress and showing its sentiment to better manage the pipeline of deals and determine where and how to allocate resources more effectively. We now move to the qualitative and quantitative impacts of the developed ecosystem of tools, where Tom will start with some of the qualitative impact. These tools fundamentally have transformed the IBM services business and the client's businesses, creating revolutionary change. We can extract client requirements from humongous client RFP documents in minutes and prepare an initial high-level solution in a matter of hours. We can now get accurate cost estimates or market price benchmarks in a matter of minutes, which is revolutionary compared to the way we used to work. We're able to respond much more quickly to our clients. In the past, it would take days or even weeks after a meeting with a client to prepare a new solution. Not only can we do this now in minutes, sometimes we can even do it in meetings with clients. We can review the competitiveness of complex cost cases in minutes, enabling us to get more accurate, optimized pricing for our solutions to increase our win rates. We also have new data insights of our business, enabling us to drive strategic decision making based on real-time analysis of real engagements again in minutes. All of this has led to real dollar value to IBM 
to significant productivity improvements to enable our skilled solutioners to spend more time with our clients and focused on creating winning outcomes. Mark will now elaborate on the quantitative impact of these changes. We've already said that the implementation of these tools has fundamentally transformed and revolutionized our services business. And this has led to many tangible benefits, be it an overall increase in the win rate of our deals, an increase in our speed to market, or internal productivity that enables us to spend more time with our clients. <laughs> overall, up to October 2018, we assessed the business benefits attributable to the content within our submission to be in excess of $350 million, accrued over the previous three and a half years, as verified by the worldwide Vice President of, planning, of Finance Planning and Analysis for IBM's Global Technology Services, a business benefit that continues to accrue to this day. As was discussed earlier in this presentation, our business is very complex. Therefore, being able to say we won this deal for a single reason is almost impossible. It is only when all the different elements come together, pricing, relationship, technical solution, etc., that we win. And with that in mind, I will now walk you through the methodology that we use to calculate the $350 million of benefits, the same methodology that we used in two successful IBM internal award submissions where we had to demonstrate within IBM the rigor of our management system used to calculate these savings. We calculated the benefits in our submission based upon two factors. Firstly, we saw a year-on-year -year overall increase in our win rate calculated as a percentage of the overall deals that we pursued. And secondly, based upon the fact that we saw a higher percentage win rate on the deals that used our tools, the bar on the right of the chart, compared to the deals that did not use our tools, the bar on the left of the chart. We therefore applied the incremental win rate percentage, X minus Y, to the revenue accrued for the same set of peer deals up to October 2018 when we initially prepared this submission. Due to the complex nature of these deals and the fact that winning or losing is never down to a single factor, we internally attributed a conservative estimate of 5% of those savings to our tools. This gave us a total savings figure in excess of $350 million. We feel that this figure is conservative given the impact that the impact of our tools uh, were not limited to revenue alone. In addition to this, we saw productivity benefits. The analysis of a complete cost case and comparisons to peer de deals could be undertaken in minutes rather than days. And given that we've had over 13,000 of these submissions to this tool, and using a broad brush estimate of one day's savings per submission, this equates to 50 person year savings in addition to the $350 million of benefit. <coughs> there have also been other less direct benefits too. For example, we can now also report metrics for our key business drivers in minutes rather than days. This ability gives us business insights that enable us to make, take business decisions much more quickly. Previously, this data had to be collected manually, reaching out to each team globally, a process that would take days. Now we can run such reports every day if we wish. Now let's hear from one of our practitioners, Martin Hess, who is a consulting technical solution manager from Germany, who uses our tools in his day-to-day -day job. I want to say thank you to all colleagues involved in designing, creating, and maintaining our great tool landscape. I mean, producing videos like that is a hobby to me. Because of all the improvements in that area, I do have more time for that. But seriously, it brings also value to my job. I'm a technical solution manager working in global technology services. And in this job role in the past, I had to deal a lot around complex processes, many administrative tasks, and complex calculations of many iterations. Sometimes we as a team have been so stuck in these activities that we completely lost the overview of a project and sometimes the customer. Now I'm able to get automated help quickly to analyze customer requirements. I can get tailored information about the customer itself 
and I can quickly create even complex global solutions and then start playing and simulating with it in, with many variables to find the best fit. This is really valuable and gives me time back. With that time, I can concentrate on the customer. I can focus on the solution integration and how to deal with customized elements and find the best win-win situation customer IBM. Thanks again for making my job easier and I'm so excited what happens next. Thank you. I'll now hand back to Tom who will close our presentation. Thank you, Mark. We also want to emphasize that the tools we developed are highly transportable to multiple businesses. Basically, any industry that runs a tender process where different products or services providers compete to win contracts with clients where other historical or market data can be leveraged to help these providers drive similar revenue productivity benefits in their businesses. For example, in the construction industry, or medical services, or financial services. We've already had interest from several other units within IBM, as well as some of IBM's clients to implement some of these tools as after they saw great potential accuracy and the efficiency of the tools. I'd like to now summarize this work. We had a real multi-billion dollar business problem that we partnered with research to solve. The developed OR and analytics tools are highly innovative as evidenced by the 19 publications, over a dozen patents, 18 conference talks, eight invited university talks. The tools are implemented, deployed, and have a strong adoption across the business. The impact has been tremendous, both qualitative productivity gains and time savings and quantitative gains in excess of $350 million. Note that the tools were not all deployed at the same time, but over time, as mentioned, we also are still deploying more capabilities and functionalities of the tools, and thus the impact will certainly grow. Lastly, the tools are highly transportable, as I just mentioned. Now we will hear from Juan Zafiria, Senior Vice President of IBM Global Services, and an endorsement of the team and the impact the tools have had on the business. I am delighted about the progress that our expertise in IBM research and services have enabled to help clients tackle their greatest challenges. Clients all over the world rely on IBM services to design, build, and run the foundational systems that are the backbone of the world's digital economy. With the power of analytics, the research team has brought a new level of science to our business, helping deliver greater outcomes for our clients. They have gone deep into the roots of understanding our business challenges to develop novel algorithms, and we have successfully partnered across the ecosystem to deploy those tools. The result is a steady adoption and growing usage of those tools across the business and helping to bring major revenue benefits for IBM. The team's collaboration has changed the way we prepare proposals for highly valued client engagements. In the past, we spent days and sometimes weeks preparing proposals to analyze our costs. This newest effort, together, has created immense value for our services team and, more importantly, our IBM clients. As you can see, we are proud of the impact that our innovative operation, research, and analytics tools have had delivered for IBM. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to tell the story. <laughs>